Well, I appreciate you guys being here as always, and uh, certainly uh, uh, a, a great win. It certainly was not perfect by any stretch of the imagination, but uh, it was one where I thought we had uh, everybody uh, more or less all in from a scheme standpoint, even though we didn't execute things defensively as we uh, would like to have in some instances. Uh, but <clears throat> when it boiled right down to it, you know, they had a hard time running the football on us for three quarters. And uh, once we got in sync with them, uh, we did give up a couple of big pass plays, which we got to get get uh, cleaned up. <clears throat> and uh, and we gave up a kickoff return uh, where we missed six tackles, and uh, which is which is pitiful. But uh, you know we we're going to continue to work and try to find the right guys. And and uh, but I was really proud of our our, our units on, on uh, in all three phases for how hard they played and how they stuck to it and uh, gained confidence as we went. And uh, you know it just. I told y'all, some of y'all the other day, you know, I had a funny f calmness about the whole thing. You know, I thought we had a chance all the way. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, we wound up forcing a couple of things, a punt, a really short punt, which we had to block. Coach Wazen called block 10 on that and brought them all. And they had a an errant snap, which made us in great position. And guy did a great job to get it out at all. And, uh, and went about 15 yards, I think, and set us up in a good field position. And then in the OT, we had a great push and rush by our front and uh, our defense. And uh, the the high snap was no way it's going to get off. And and uh, and we we were able to shut them out in the overtime possession, <clears throat> and then which set us up for an opportunity to win them with a field goal. And Deion Anthony, uh, Kenny made a call. I don't think he called this particular play all day, and uh, which gave Deion a chance to keep the ball if if he saw it, and uh, and uh, it was there, and he took it all the way down to around the 10, 15 yard line. I don't know, I remember exactly. I think we ran one more play, and uh, sent Corey back in the game to to go true it up for us, and he ran over and kneeled on it, and and then Will. Will Scott and the, and the field goal unit, uh, you know, perfectly executed a, however long it was field goal for the win. And uh, uh, I, you got to always give your opponents credit. I I, I really think uh, Garrick McGee has done a done a great job up there. I, I know they play tough schedules, and and uh, and I know that uh, their team certainly looks apart, and they played the part. Uh, very physical outfit and. And, uh, you know, the, they had every chance to win the game and probably deserved to win the game. But as, as it turned out, we were able to, to close, close the gap and get it tied and go to overtime and, and, uh, and win the game. Uh, so uh, I'm very proud of our coaches and our players and, and our people. You know, I, it was a hot day. We had a heck of a crowd. I don't know how many there were here, but, uh, you know, I think it was a – it was enough that I, I feel confident we'll continue to get pretty good crowds here. Uh, so uh, looking forward to uh, this preparation, which is really a two-game preparation when you get right down to it because we got we got a Saturday game and then we got a Thursday night game in Jonesboro, which is uh, Arkansas, which is a tough place to get to. And uh, so uh, we'll have to turn around pretty quickly after – we play Savannah State and get right back to, to the grind on on uh, Arc State. So, uh, questions? Coach, how much do you think uh, number 36, Jordan Chun, really contributed to the ball game? I thought late in the game, I mean, boy, he, I'm a fan. Yeah. Well, I, I am too. Uh, and I'll tell you the main reason I'm a fan is he hadn't fumbled it in, in – uh, he, training camp, he, he didn't have a turnover, and uh, and uh, he's the only one that I know that didn't. And uh, but I thought Brandon, I thought Burks ran the ball really well and uh, showed his uh, abilities. And uh, you know, I got on him a little bit about running. I thought he should have run inside on the trap scheme one time, but there were two guys inside. He saw a lot more than I saw. And after 
reviewing the film. But Chun, uh, Chun is a big uh, uh, young man. He's about 230, and I tell you, you know, I don't know how well he picked up uh, from a standpoint, but we, we had him out most of the time, made a couple of catches, really really good soft hands, and which Burks has has those same qualities also. You just about got to catch football if you play for us in the, in the backfield. And uh, and uh, those two guys really, really perform well. And uh, But Chun is a you – know, I've had my eye on him. Uh, of course, we knew he was a good player, and I've had great, great reviews by his – coaches back home and and uh, other coaches that I know know uh, about his performance in high school and his 4A player of the year <clears throat> from uh, Madison County in Gurley, Alabama, right outside of Huntsville. And I'm very proud of uh, all of them, but he uh, first college start or first college game, he did not start. Brandon Burke, uh, Brandon Burke started and did well. So, but Chun uh, is a uh, uh, is, a, is a very bright spot in the game. What's uh, the status of Chris Well, Chris uh, really is uh, – he is back close to his uh, s score level or w the score level we got to get to uh, before we put him back into any activity. And uh, so, you know, uh, he, he probably will do light, light work, n no real game prep, won't play this week. Uh, trying to get him totally well, and along and Wilson also. I'm not. I hadn't heard. I know we did an MRI for Wilson this morning, uh, uh, just to be sure about some things. And uh, I'm hoping that both are are going to be back ready for for the R State game. But again, there's certain protocol that we've been and had in force for five or six years now about concussions and and. Uh, where they, where they have to get back to all the baseline tests and everything they have to get back to before they can go back to to uh, contact football. Is there anything that you're going to emphasize this week in practice to try and combat the fumbling problem you guys had on Saturday? Well, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna make sure them guys know they ain't gonna be out there if they're gonna fumble a football. And uh, period. And uh, you know, uh, there were a couple of. KD almost had one. They ruled it an incomplete, I think. But really and truly, getting back to Corey, Corey's other – his two incompletions in the course of the game were drops. So, I mean, he could have been 32 for 32 very easily because uh, Eric Thomas very seldom ever drops one. And uh, KD is also a very trustworthy receiver. Uh, so, um, uh, and what was your question? Well, we're going we're gonna to try to get better ourselves and, and try to get – we had a lot of people didn't play as much as we had anticipated them playing in a hot game. Uh, the game just didn't dictate us as long as those other guys were able to go back out there. Uh, but what, what I want to do is I want to make sure that we uh, are ready with the depth that we feel like we have and make sure we play them a reasonable amount of uh, snaps. Uh, to try to prepare them for, you know, a college football game uh, in 2013, and uh, so I, I'm hoping that we get good work uh, this week and and try to try to uh, get some guys in the lineup uh, in the depth positions, backup positions that where they can perform and and be trustworthy to put in against an Arc State or. Or a conference team, or some of those guys we got non non conference on down the schedule. What do you think it says about your team? They were able to fight back, especially with so much adversity, the fumbles and things like that, and, and be able to pull off the plan. Well, it's a uh, it's never it's not over till it's over, you know, and that's uh, something that I I feel like uh, these kids understand and believe, especially with our offense and and. Uh, you know, had we not turned it over twice ourselves, you know, the game might have been a, a different game, uh, a little closer until the end. But uh, uh, it, it was what it was. And, and uh, the thing about uh, I think you probably – usually when something's hard-earned, you, you grow more from it as a football team. And uh, certainly uh, I think as we rolled along there, our defense got better. 
Uh, they played really hard. I mean, I wish you, you, you know, if you go back and study the tape, you you can see how how they were uh, striving to get their job done and get to the ball and flying around and uh, uh, offensively. I thought our, I don't think our offensive line. They, we gave up a sack. Uh, uh, but I don't think they missed any assignments, uh, and which is phenomenal. And uh, so, uh, you know, we got to keep finding folks there also to, you know, maybe have a bigger presence in, inside, uh, which we're not very big in some spots, uh, but we're we're big of heart in those spots. Spots, so which which makes you uh, a better player, certainly. Uh, I. I think we we got to make sure we shore up everything that we can shore up this week. Get as good as we can be. Have a clean performance, a clean performance against Savannah State. Everybody in the world at picking football gonna pick Troy to win this game. And if you're stupid, then you will listen to everybody in the world and uh, think you can just waltz out there and win a game. I predict that they will be much better from week one to week two. Uh, Ernest Wilson has only been there since June the seventh. Which I mean, he's he's had to throw this thing together and and um, you know you, you and put put a college football team on the field in a very short period of time. So you know, he's to be commended and and the leader to be the leader of the Savannah State uh, program and uh, and uh, you know I, I think uh, they'll be much better as a team uh, when they get here and uh, you know we need to be sure that we can deal with that and uh, and then. Uh, of course, you know it'd be real uh, dumb to say that, or, or a lie to say that we're not peaking a little bit at uh, ahead at Art State to open conference opener because you know it's it's uh, looming large and uh, and uh, you know so we but but main thing we need to do is take care of ourselves, take care of Troy, and if we do that, then you know we we should win and we should be. Uh, well prepared uh, uh, for for our state on on the Thursday night also. Have you ever had a quarterback have a game like uh, Corey did on Saturday? Not in, uh, you know, not, you know, we had Levi here who who broke a bunch of records before he left, and uh, Corey's already uh, surpassed all of them certainly. But uh, I, don't, I don't believe I've ever had one quite that uh, dynamic as far as completions and percentage of completions and. Uh, you know he's he's really uh, really done a good job. Uh, he knows the offense, and he's been really disciplined as far as where he, his pre-snap and pre-snap operation and, and where he looks when the ball gets in his hand and which side he needs to go to to take advantage of coverages and and uh, when to go when to take the shots and you know hey he, you know he's a, he's a veteran quarterback and I'm uh, I'm excited for him and our team because of that. Well, you know, it really helps us offensively uh, uh, to know that the guy probably could coach this offense himself, you know, and he and several more of them on offense, you know, that have been playing. Uh, Evan McKissick's been playing in this offense since he was a freshman in high school. You know, he's a Hoover guy. So, and we're in basically a similar, maybe different terms and that kind of stuff, but a similar operation. And uh, But there's a lot of guys that have been – doing this a while so it gives them a, a chance to improve and and refine their duties and assignments and abilities to be more prolific offensively.